So, a lot of the stuff I've been doing recently has involved bench testing various pieces of electronics. And up till now, I have been bodging together power supplies from old USB chargers and things like that. And this has never really been very satisfactory. So what I'm going to do today is try to build a proper bench power supply out of this old ATX power supply. These things are great, they're cheap, they're rock solid, they are more, mostly indestructible, they provide lots of current if you need them to, and they provide rock solid regulated uh, voltages, which is just what you need for electronics. So what I'm gonna do is pretty straightforward. I'm just going to rip off the cables because I really don't need this spaghetti mass of PC power supply cables and instead replace them with the industry standard for bench power supplies, which are banana plugs. So this is actually a pretty straightforward job. I have done this before and didn't manage to electrocute myself. These things are straightforward to work on inside as there's plenty of space and it's big chunky tracks even on the low voltage side. So I'm just going to take the lid off, remove the big bundle of cables, then I will drill some holes in the case and just to install the banana plugs. I might be able to fit them in this hex mesh here which would be nice but we'll see. I'm not going to do that on camera because it will involve going out onto the balcony and doing stuff with drills. I probably shouldn't do it today anyway. Today is Sunday and you're not really supposed to make loud noises in Switzerland on Sundays. Loud noises meaning drills. So the cables are connected with a cable tie which sorry there. They're anchored with a cable tie. So that can come off go into the bin and I will just cut these off. I'm going to keep the wires, they'll come in useful for bench testing PC power supply components after I solder banana plugs onto the end. So these ATX power supplies will generate 5 volts uh, 3.3 volts, 12 volts, minus 12 volts. Some of them will generate minus 5 volts. I don't know about this one though. And I don't know how many of these I'll actually bring out. With minus 12 and plus 12 that gives you 24 volts. With minus 5 and plus 12, that gives you 17 volts. So you can actually get a reasonable range of voltages without needing an adjustable power supply. It is important to be careful when working on them because these are mains devices and they've got big, oh, big, big capacitors and this one has been off for ages, so it's going to be completely discharged, but they can... If you get a wire in the wrong place, then you'll have a bad day. Wow, that's a lot of wires. they can supply huge current. So the one thing you get from a real bench power supply, there we go, which you don't get from this is of course current limiting. Okay, but I'm not going to worry about that. This might not be as easy as I thought actually. A lot of this stuff is potted to the board. Anyway, let's get the board out so we can have a proper look. Oh, 
I might have had to have left those wires longer so I could use them to connect up my banana plug. Great, the screw's been potted. I suspect they don't want people doing this. Okay, I'm going to have to chip the resin off the screw. If it's possible. Well, the, the fan just plugs on, which is nice. So I can just unplug that. And put this aside for space. The screw. And I don't know what they made this stuff out of. Yeah, the warranty on this power supply probably isn't worth much at this point. Okay. And the switchboard is not plugged, it's screwed. Can I get it off? I do not think I can, to be honest. It looks like the switches clip into the uh, clip in this way, and then the board has been then soldered to the back of the switches. So I cannot imagine how that would ever come off. Given that the actual power supply wires here are pretty short, that does not give a lot of space to work in. But I can get at the bottom of the board which is good enough. Yeah, this is a insulating plastic that's been glued into the bottom of the box. This thing was seriously not designed for maintenance. Right, we've got some massive solder. Because this has to deal with monster currents. And everything is nicely labelled on the front of the board. So now it's just a matter of removing these wires one by one and then soldering new ones in so let me just adjust the soldering iron it was set to 400 uh, 400, 340 for doing some stuff with a multi-layer PCB which was unsuccessful Seriously, a lot of these. And this will all be ghastly lead free solder as well, which is no fun to work with. 
Okay. That managed to heat the wire up so it was too hot to touch, but did not actually make it. Did not actually remove it. Uh, need to work on this a bit more methodically. So we've got a big bundle of these yellow wires, which connect to this monster solder block here. I am going to have to turn the soldering iron up again. Three three thirty. Apply some tension, apply some heat. It's possible that these solder blobs are so sodding huge that the soldering iron will be unable to melt them. That would be a shame. Yeah. So the other thing I could do, of course, is to just chop the wires off close to the PCB. These yellow ones are plus 12 volts. So I may not need that many of them. It'd be rather nice to get the whole thing off. Uh, okay. I might need to put some solder on in order to ah, ouch flux is not your friend so this should this is yeah I think so I can see that it's actually melting the stuff I just put on and not melting the stuff on the board. So there's a possibility that they're using high temperature solder. It's, pr it's probably just that this is a big lump of solder and my iron is not producing quite enough heat for it, but we'll see. I said this was simple.
So one of those green wires I just removed, well the green wire, there should be one, is actually the signal wire that causes the power supply to start up. And I should have marked where it was on the board. Oh well, never mind. Once all the rest of the stuff has been cleared off the board, there will be more space to work. This enormous block here is all ground, and that is going to be enormous fun to desolder. Let's throw a bit more heat, but I don't think my line's up to this. Luckily, I have a blowtorch. Is it actually going to melt at all? I don't think it is. So I do have a gas powered soldering iron, that produces loads of heat, and I've run out of gas, so that's not much use. So I'm just going to try cranking this iron up some more, I don't really want to turn it too high, it's on 318 right now, which is very hot. But that is actually beginning to melt this stuff. should be able to gradually pick away at it. But I don't want to get the board too hot because I might run the risk of damaging things. So I'm just going to try to remove solder bit by bit. Hmm. They're massive, massive holes through which, yeah, look, look at that. Uh, there are about four wires through that one single hole. So in fact, there's this lump is not solder, it's mostly, it's mostly copper from the wires. That explains why they're getting so hot and why they are so difficult to remove. So in fact, this, now I have enough heat, this should be straightforward enough. Because they'll all come out as a unit. Come on. Okay, it's now too hot to touch. Let's try this one. Yeah. 
Yeah, look at that. The wires are in fact crimped together and then the entire metal plug is pushed through the hole and soldered down. That's just not right. Okay, but anyway, there it's coming, so... Yes, in hindsight, a rather better way to do this would be to chop the wires off further up and not try to desolder them from the board at all. Instead, just use something like a chocolate block connector or solder them directly to the banana plugs. Well, I assume that the reason why I'm doing this is so that I can make the mistakes that you don't have to. Moving. Ow. Now loosen the joint. Right, that one's not coming out because it's actually crimped in place. So by um, it's actually hooked into the board. So that should now just neatly pop out. Not so neatly pop out the other side. Some more twelves that must be come from here. See if we can do this at some boy. Um, that's the wrong wire. Rounds are going to be a big problem. 
There's a lot of them. A lot of these are being problems. So these yellow ones are 12s and they connect I think this pad here are the 12s so in fact there's a big hole here yeah, which I can easily clear out with the soldering iron so Is this wire I'm jiggling? That one. Right. Which means that this last bunch must be this one. which is pretty hot. Moved a bit, but not much. Let's try the other bundle of yellows. trying each bundle in turn and then as they get too hot to touch move on to the next one while it cools down. Some of these have been cut off too close to the board, so I can't actually get a good grip on them. Let's try that bundle. If 
I was not actually expecting this to be so difficult. I wonder if I can do something clever with the snips by just chewing through. That's actually working. This isn't just cutting solder, this is actually chewing through the bottom of the wires and those big crimp connectors. We actually have holes open for a 12, 5, 3.3, etc. So I would like to get the rest out simply because this is a horrible mess, but I think I may have enough to actually solder on the wires to the banana plugs. But let's give this a few more goes anyway. Ow. Yep, that one worked. <clears throat> Hey, that's all the twelves. So I do need at least some of the fives out to get some holes. Right, that's a five. That's a bundle of fives. There's only one more bundle of fives by the look of it. So let's give this one a go. There we go. Right. Okay, now we, we need some of the ground leads. So let's see if I can identify a bundle with some long wires. Right, this bundle goes to here. is not going to work. I need I need the pair of needle nose pliers that I can never find. Be right back. Found my needle nose pliers which were of course within easy arm's length the whole time. This gives me the ability to apply some tension without having to touch the hot copper wires.
Making no headway with that big lump of solder at all. Four hundred is the maximum this this soldering arm will go to. So it's not like I can turn it up any further. One of the reasons I want to get the wires cleared off is so that I can see the board from the other side. But I suspect that it just ain't going to work. And I'm just going to have to cut these off. Yeah, these wires are really hot. See if I can get some more of this stuff off mechanically. Cap's pretty warm. I wonder what it's rated at. Hmm. Can't see a temperature. Uh, that does not feel good. I wonder if I've taken the track up. One bundle of earthwise. The more I take off, the easier it will be because there's less heat sinking the uh, less metal sinking the heat. And let's so uh, that worked quite cleanly. It hasn't touched the track at all. So let's try a bit more mechanical leverage.
Come on. It moved. The thing that ha might have happened here is that I've bent the crimp so it now won't fit through the hole anymore. But it did move a bit.
Well, I do actually have a couple of holes now for ground. So possibly I don't actually need any more. I would like to, as I said, shave off these wires so I can see the board. And most importantly, see the labels on the board. Getting access is going to be rather tricky if I want to shave them off at board level because it's all like buried deep between other components. I would just remove some of these caps so I could get access because I can always put them back again later. Uh, I mean, that's a 10 volt, uh, 1000 microfarad capacitor. I think I've got several. So even if I do break it, I can replace it. But uh, it's all glued down with this yellow cuckoo spit stuff. So I think, don't think that's a good idea. Big lumps of copper wire sucking away the heat. I was going to expect that soldering this thing would be the easiest part of the job. Okay, so I'm going to turn the soldering on, sign off while I think. So I'm not really happy about it being so hot. Because I kind of want to mechanically remove the as much of this metal as possible. So what are my options other than soldering and trying to pull the crimps out? Well, there's always the pulling bits off with the, the snips, which is pretty crude, but vaguely successful. The small ones, you, actually you can see all this stuff on my workbench. This is all solder I've pulled off, so it works. I suppose I could try is drilling out some of these plugs. That's rather more uh, mechanical than I was slightly ho rather hoping to do, you see.
Incidentally, all this conductive debris, I'm going to have to brush the board down carefully once I'm done. Get as much of it off as possible. Okay, let's give this another go. You can actually see on the board, the bit I'm working on on the left is the low voltage stuff. And the bit on the, the right, the other side of this big dividing line, is the high voltage stuff. Which is nice. It means there's a decent separation between the two sides of the board. You really don't want your high voltage mains to leak through to your low voltage DC bad things happen. Ha! Got one! Okay. So... Which one's next? This... Bundle. No, that's not budging at all. Let me just double check I've got the right set of wires. Yeah, it looks about right. Anyway, let's try this one instead. This one comes from up here, so... Snips again. At least now I've dumped so much heat into it, the metal's soft. Actually gouging up the PCB there, so let's stop doing that. I mean, it's not like there's plenty of track, but uh, yeah, let's lift up the track. There's 
a nice ground pin there. Mm, that's interesting. That's very interesting. Yep, the soldering iron is too hot. I can tell because I've wrecked the tip. Well, that's great. It's actually corroded into a down one side. So let's crank this thing down to a rather saner 270-ish. I'm going to have to replace the tip, so, I mean, it's now, like, buggered. I don't think I'm going to have any more luck trying to get stuff off with the soldering iron. So can I, in fact, chop the wires off where they stand? don't think I quite have room. I've got these terrible top-facing snips, but they're really very bad. And there's still not quite enough room. The board is actually quite cool. I'm going to try to drill. After all, what could possibly go wrong? I mean, I'm working on a piece of delicate means powered equipment.
has that helped? I have a couple of holes through the plugs in the wires. There's another bundle of wires. That was removed through sheer brute force and ignorance, however, and I also damaged the PCB doing so. I mean, it's fine. Um, just to be on the safe side, once it's done, I'll solder a jumper wire across these two bits of PCB. But that's not the right way to do it. We now have three bundles of wires left. Hmm. You know, given that the the soldering iron tip is ruined anyway, I might as well turn the temperature back up. Because it ain't going to get any more ruined.
Now the other thing that might help is snipping the wires off reduces the thermal mass and allows me to get the solder hotter so it would be more likely to actually get the stuff off. I'm not sure that I can snip them off. Got one! Fantastic! I think that leaves just one more bundle to go. Are all these the same bundle? They are. I thought there were two there. Okay. Good. So this should actually... Yeah, be so much easier. Okay. Right, so that's done. Let's turn the soldering iron down to a much, much saner temperature. And let's see what we've got. Right, now. There are m multiple 12 volt supplies. There's one here and there's one here. The 5 volt grid is here, and there's a nice small hole for me to put my wire in. Ground is here, likewise a hole. 3.3 .3 is here. Now, the startup signal... Oh yeah, this one here is plus 5 standby, so this is on even if the rest of the supply is off. But it's very limited as the current. Uh, There's a hole here marked ground, which is probably a ground. Yeah, the one I need to positively identify is the startup. There's plenty of stuff on video, so I might go back and figure out where it came from.
Yeah, look at this stuff. Nasty metal crimps, and I managed to bash myself about. There's a hole here with a diamond on it. But that's just connected to the 3.3 volt lines, so there's not much interest. I notice that the two big 3.3s here and the little one above it are not connected on the PCB. So let's just try yep okay that's just me there's a hole down here ah oh, underneath all this grotty potting to read the label. I think it says plus 12. That's plus 12, is it connected to the other 12? Oops. Oh, interesting. I think it's connected to our capacitor. Yeah. It's, it's also probably not our startup signal. There's a hole here. This one. Oh, that's I've seen that one. That's marked ground. Yeah, I'm going to have to go look at the video. Okay, well, that is progress, even though it was really embarrassing progress. So the plan has actually failed. I, whoops, I did drill the holes, and it turns out that they are in fact slightly too close together to allow the banana plug sockets to go into place. There isn't quite as much space in the uh, in this opening than it appears there is, which is a problem because it means the banana plug sockets won't fit. So I still don't want to drill holes in this side because this will mean tethering the top of the case to the, uh, to the wires. So, I think the only place I can put the banana plugs realistically is here. And I don't want to put them here because, as I said, the main voltage stuff is all over there. And I can't put them here because the fan's in the way. So, I'm actually going to try some lateral thinking. The fan fits in the top of the case. 
I think it may be possible to remove the fan and mount it on the outside of the case with this grill still attached so that it doesn't chop people's fingers off, which would open up all the space along here to put the sockets. So I'm actually going to give that a bit of a try just to see what happens. I don't know whether the fan mount will actually work at the top of the case, but the only way is to try it and see. So this is another, these are more Philips heads. Let's uh, just posse drive. If you pick the wrong one, it almost but not quite works. Those are weird. I can probably actually get away without the fan. The amount of power this thing's going to be dissipating is essentially nil. The piece, uh, the power supply is designed to run a 200 watt PC. So this can fit there. And the grill is actually, is the grill glued on? That'd be great if it was. Or is it just, no it's not glued on, it's just, it's got these rubber mounts. Yeah. Those are some very old and manky rubber washers. So if we can put it here with the rubber washers in place, this wire has to go inside, so that would drop through like this. This then needs bolting to the top of the fan. that going to work? I think it might, you know. So let's re reuse these rubber washers. They have been holding this fan on for so long now, it seems unfair to throw them away. Wherever the last one went. There were four, weren't there? I don't believe I dropped it. See, this is why I take video. Yep, tracked it down. I had, in fact, dropped it on the floor. Okay. So... I've been moving the thing around so much, I've lost the orientation of where everything goes. The box only goes on one way round, so I need to be sure that it is in fact that way round. because these things here need to lock into place. So it clips on like that. The The power socket for the fan is there. So this needs to plug in
like this, if I can actually get it in. And the fan needs to be this way up so it blows up into the air. Okay, so the fan mount, uh, the wires for the fan are on the south side of the box. The label is on the north side of the box. Yes, that does in fact not go on the other way. So with the with the label on the north side, we turn it over. We turn this over as well. The wire is on the south side, so it goes on like this. Place the rubber washers. The fan, as you can see, is filthy. I should actually clean it before I put it all together again. Alright, so it goes on this way. That's not so bad. Fan cover goes here, and we need some nuts and bolts to fasten it on with. What have I got here? Some generic metal bolt. You know, the thing about all this dust is it's probably all me. The computer this came out of I had for a while.
probably do the others as well. That's actually forced the, uh, the hook at the end of the fan cover apart, which isn't so hot. One fan in place. So that looks like it'll work. So I need the banana plug sockets to go here. This will involve um, taking apart some of the the hex. Ventilation grill. So, where would I put them? Here. The earth wire, uh, the grounding strap is somewhat in the way, but we can avoid that. So, they will go f quite happily two apart. So, that we laid out like this. That allows me to put. This one would go there, but I don't think that's too near the edge of the case. So let's go there. But that puts it in the middle of the grounding strap. So if go there, skip two for there, skip two for there, so the tag on the end of the banana plug is not in the middle of the banana plug which makes it a little harder to keep track of where they are. That's quite reasonable. This is a straying a little into main territory, but not too badly. The good news is I probably don't even need to drill it, because I should just be able to. Uh, if I'm strong enough, I should just be able to snip this thing apart. Hmm. Famous last words.
The other thing the hex grill might do for me is it makes it really easy to mount a power LED, which is another thing I'd rather like. This is a bench power supply. I'm probably going to be turning it on and off a lot. I need to know whether it's going to be on before I start dismantling whatever it is I'm I'm currently running off it. Okay, that wasn't what I wanted. Yeah. Everything is harder than it looks. So what's a good way to get this apart? Probably not the drill, and besides, it's too late at night for that. I in fact own two pairs of snips, which are these. So I'm just going to have to try try it with these. The, the teeth, the blades aren't quite narrow enough to go in the holes uh, to go in the holes in the hex grid. It does appear to be cutting. I have to be careful not to bend it actually. Okay, so elegant. Can I aim it? Uh, this one is going to be 3.3 .3 volts, so we actually want to arrange them in order of voltage. So let's put ground in this side and then we'll go. 3.35 and 12. Right, that's not quite wide enough. Again, I'm going to need to check carefully for metal fragments in the works. Because shorting something out in your power supply is generally not considered a great idea. Okay, that goes in. It's not brilliant. It needs a washer, but I'm not sure I have any big washers. It is amazing what you can do with a grommet. So, I need to cut the grommet lengthways, try to cut the grommet lengthways, So, this then becomes elastic enough to push up over the banana plug socket. 
I then find the banana plug socket bolt. Beautiful. Let's just try plugging it. Yeah, that's fine. The rubber gives it a bit of flex, which may cause it to. Um, come undone. So I actually need to. So I tightened it by rotating the uh, banana plug itself, but I actually need to tighten the bolt itself. Because now the banana plug won't rotate because it's jammed by the rubber washer. Yeah, and the washer's squashed flat. Good. So, it's not much more solid. Excellent. I believe that's a success, finally. Okay. So, skip one. The next one I want to do is this one. And looking at the washer projects slightly into the, the middle square so that there will actually be space once I snip out this one. This is quite hard work. Okay. And clean up. Alright, that's the next one. Skip one. This one is next. This one will be 3.3 volts. A 
The downside about this position is it's going to be really close to the mains plug here. Which is, that's not dangerous, it's just unwieldy. There are actually big chunks of exposed mains on the on that board there. Yeah, it should be okay. Okay, three holes, one more to go, let's get this one, it's going to be this one. Okay. Right. So three point three volts, which is going to be green. It's going 
to go here. And I actually think I need a spanner for this. One spanner. Hmm, <laughs> there's absolutely no space to work. I'm sure the spanner will help. Yeah, I get a bit of a turn. How well plugged is that? Needs to be a bit tighter. Actually pretty close. Also, my wire isn't long enough. So I may need to take this board out and replace the wires with longer ones. Yeah. Always cut wires longer than you think. Also, it is actually quite close to this big chunk of mains. So I think I'm going to need to find a piece of cardboard or plastic or something which I can tuck in there just to be on the safe side. Anyway, that one's done. So, cut up my other grommets, like so. Yeah, score in my nice new cutting mat. Well, that's what they're for. And that did not actually cut straight in any shape or form.
That's looking pretty decent actually. Okay, and the last one. Here's the 12 volt line. to chop so much off the grommet. Yeah, this the red one hasn't gone in straight because uh, I didn't chop the grommet uh, evenly. So I'm actually going to take this one off again. another grommet and half of the yellow one because that's uh, no good. actually going around at all. It, it looks like it was. Ooh, the bolt has twisted and it's okay, that's going to be interesting. I need to unscrew this. has in fact popped all the way through the um, the grid. I think that was just bad luck. Let's try this again. If I can get the plug seated properly with the grommet pushing through instead, then that will make the bolt actually work. Uh, the nut, rather. Okay, so now the poor yellow one. Yeah, that's not right. I'm going to have to ruin another grommet. Let's see if I can do it right this time.
Okay, how does that look? Yeah, that's okay. All right, fantastic. So we have the black wire goes here. The orange wire goes here. And assuming I soldered it on first time, there's enough space. The red wire goes here. The yellow wire goes here. It's all a bit tight, but it should work. Impulsive dust. Okay, I'm actually going to try my patent wire stripper on this, which doesn't quite work right, but it's very good when it does work, like so. Okay, now tin the, the banana plug in, uh, tags, also trying not to, drop, to drip solder into the works. Okay, now the orange one, which is the 3.3 volt line, is the tightest. So let's do that one first. So that's going to go here. No problem. Five volts. And twelve goes to here. Okay, so the only other thing I really need, apart from the LED, which I'm actually going to do later, 
is some sort of shield for the mains. Go and have a go poking around my various junk drawers. Okay, so I've done some stuff offline. I have. I did actually add the LED I said I was going to, which is rather crudely cemented into a hole in the hex grid. It's connected via a 700 ohm resistor, which is about three times bigger than I really need for this LED, but I don't want it to be bright. It's just an indicator light. And this piece of actual plastic is a just a precaution shield between the the main voltage stuff down here and the low voltage stuff further up. It's I mean there's plenty of clearance, there's a good centimeter or so, but let's be careful anyway. So now the only thing to let do is to put the lid on, fire it up, and hope that my house fuse doesn't blow. So uh, Label goes on the north side of the board, so first I need to plug the fan in. The wires now make it a little e less easy to reach the socket, but that is what angled pliers are for. Plug it in. Okay, and the screws go in the top, which is nice and convenient. This screwdriver tip is not magnetic, which means holding the screws on is not as easy as one would hope. Okay, and the last screw. Okay, that now feels nice and robust. And there's a good big hole here for sticking fingers in, and there probably isn't much alive in the other side, but I will stick some tape over that once I'm done. And on the now the front, we have the four colored banana plug sockets for the low voltage, a switch which I'll set to off, and the mains input. Okay, I'll hook it up and see what happens. So it's hooked up to the mains. Now press the switch, I suppose. And the spinny thing spins, the LED glows, still quite bright actually. And now I need some banana plugs and we'll check the voltages. So I've got some banana plugs with some crocodile clips. And I've got the meter. Now, important safety tip, these power supplies can generate a serious lot of current. Why did I bother with the banana plugs? I can just stick this in the... Yeah. These uh, supplies can generate a serious lot of current, which means if you short them out, then... Oh, look at that. 
5.08, dead on, that's nice. And the green one, 3.3, .3, dead on. And the yellow one, eh, close enough. That's great. It's not even particularly loud. It's blowing air out of the power supply box, which means it's sucking air in through the grill on the front. Yeah, uh, yes, if you short one out, then things can get warm. The supply is supposed to, like, fail without setting fire to anything, but I've been hacking it about somewhat, so don't do that. Yes, well, in conclusion, this is how you incompetently turn a ATX power supply into a bench power supply. If you want to do this yourself, try to do a better job than I did. In hindsight, I would not have tried to remove those big bundles of cables. What I would have done instead is to trim and terminate them and not touch the board at all. Cutting the wires longer would have meant that I didn't, wouldn't have needed to solder on wires myself. The issue with terminating them is that there's quite a lot. Like this is the bundle from just the, the, uh, the motherboard supply socket alone. And there's four, five, six, uh, auxiliary supplies for uh, hard drives and things and they would all need terminating safely not just letting like bare ends dangle but that's doable I mean it's not particularly difficult the simplest way is to cut them off clean fold the end over and wrap with insulating tape and then you can bundle them all together with insulating tape um, yeah, but this worked and it hasn't exploded yet and it's not making hot smells yet and it has a nice LED. I could have used a bigger resistor for that actually. It's quite bright. Yeah, that will power various bits of electronics for a good while for me and in fact Having everything coming off one side of the box means it will very neatly slot in over this side of my workbench where it's out of the way. I can possibly even put things underneath it, but not on top of it. Okay, that's a success so far. If anything burns down, I will try to capture it in videotape for you. Oh good, that does turn off.